Hey fellas, I am at this point. So I've got the fuselage pretty much ready to go. Got a few little odds and ends to put on, but then I can start tackling the wings and uh, which are kind of a pain in the butt. The trumpeter, trumpeter has all these stupid flaps and, and all kinds of stuff that, that make it a lot more complicated than, than what it should be. So I'm going to tackle that in the next episode. But in this one, I show you some of the issues that uh, you're going to run into if you're building this plane uh, when you when you go to put the fuselage halves together. There are some some major issues that you need to to need, need to handle, and I just kind of show you the best way that I've found so far to uh, to tackle those, including getting the cockpit to fit uh, well, uh, the tail end section here, putting the uh, if you get a new ventral fin putting the the resin ventral fin on and as well as the front landing gear so that's kind of what we're going to cover i also uh, include a bonus feature which i was going to put in the 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 next video but i thought well we'll just throw it in on this one uh how i tackle the glare shield area now a buddy of mine that used to work on on uh, jets I asked him what this area was called because I don't know. And for some of you new guys that are new to my channel, you'll find out pretty quickly that uh, most of the time I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So uh, uh, just keep that in mind. And uh, you know, if you if you're if you're building a model and and you and you uh, watch some of my videos, just kind of keep that in the back of your head that most of the time I don't I don't really know much about airplanes. So uh, you know, <laughs> if I say something. Uh, don't take it as the gospel. Uh, do your own research. I just kind of put plastic pieces together and, and make something that looks somewhat like an airplane. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's get on with the video. And, and if you're building this plane, I hope that this, uh, this part uh, helps you out. Got the cockpit details pretty much where I want them. And it's imperative that you do a lot of dry fitting with this kit. Now, Nigel from Nigel's Modeling Bench pointed out that the seats may be too high or low. I don't know about that, but uh, you do have to test fit the cockpit when you glue it in. And let me show you. Uh, one other thing before we get into that. Uh, Trumpeter, in their infinite wisdom, they've got these little tabs on the canopies. So if you want to keep it open, you got to leave those tabs on. But they don't give you any place to insert the tabs. And they don't show that on the instruction sheet. They just show you having the like, tabs cut off. And so they really don't tell you anything about that. So what I did is I just cut out some notches in these back firewalls. And, uh, or bulkheads or whatever you call them. And uh, just you just stick this in here. Like so. And that seems to work out. Now, <clears throat> when I say you got a test fit... These uh, these bulkheads, if you glue them in the kit part the way you're supposed to, you'll end up with a big gap right along the top here, and it's 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 horrible. So you got to make sure you test fit. And what I did, pull the tape off here, Excuse my mess. You gotta love trumpeter. Okay, pull it apart. <clears throat> now, as you can see, I've got all the photo etch detail. I added in my own seat belts, and then I added some hoses, uh, an oxygen hose with some lead wire. Uh, it looks pretty good in my opinion. Now, uh, the, the sidewalls, the photo etch that came with the photo etch kit, have you glue, make your own, um, sidewalls with a photo etch and you do a bunch of bending. And I was afraid it was going to leave a gap along the top. And I knew the kit part didn't leave any gap. So I went ahead and just used the kit part and uh, glued it into the side like you're supposed to, and then added the photo etch along the kit part. And the cockpit rests in these in in these little uh, notches here, and then they've got the the little pegs that fit in just like so. 
And what I was saying is these don't fit up there if you glue the uh, glue them in the way you're supposed to. Now this back bulkhead has like a little lip that fits in there and it sets it down just like maybe a few millimeters lower than what it is right now. So you have to cut that off and then glue. I, what I did is I glued it in there with some Tamiya Extra Thin and while it was soft, I stuck this in here and moved it up. And the same thing with the front, with the, uh, the one behind the main pilot. So that's how I took care of that. I also added a little bit of styrene in here. So when I go to put these together, I can get a nice snug fit. And uh, it's not back too far. Um, one other thing that I've done <clears throat> is I've painted the inside of these intakes white. There's a little bit of overspray. And then I painted the rest of the plane black on the inside because when you look in there, I want it to be totally dark in there so you don't see any bare plastic if you happen to shine a flashlight in the back. Uh, the fuselage, the instructions will have you put uh, the this in, the, the, the cockpit, the front wheel bay, there's a bomb bay, which if you want to have that open, you have to cut out stuff. So um, I'm just going to use that as structural support. So I am going to glue that in. And then the engine. And they have you glue that in, or glue those in, and then close up the fuselage halves. And then they've got these two end pieces that you're supposed to glue. Like this. And then fit them in the back. Now that's what I did with the D model, and the fit wasn't that bad, but, you know, uh, when I was researching how other people built this, one guy suggested gluing these in first, which I think is probably a good idea. So I'll go ahead, and I'm going to try that with this one, is I'm going to glue these in first, and we'll turn it around here so you can see what the seam will look like. So the seam's gonna be pretty good if I can if I can do that. And that way when I clean up, I just have the top to clean up. And the top part's gonna actually be um, covered by the vertical stabilizer. And uh, the bottom part down here, there's gonna be not any cleanup because the arrestor hook goes down here on the bottom. So I think that's the best way to go. That's the way I would recommend it. Uh, some other little issues that I'm gonna take care of. Uh, especially right here, there is uh, kind of like a divot, and apparently what that is is that's a that's some kind of a vent, and it's supposed to be open. There's a big hole there. So what I did with the D model, let me grab it. What I did with the D model is I opened that up, I drilled a hole. And then I took some styrene tubing, like this, stuck it down in there, glued it, and that way I get that, that vent open. Now, from what I understand, all these other little vents, they, they can be opened as well. Um, if you do that, you might as well open up every one of them, and there's a bunch of them around the plane. I think if I just hit those with some black wash, <clears throat> it will, uh, it will uh, give them the look of being opened and that way I don't have to drill a bunch of plastic. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm gonna get to finishing the the engine and basically I'm just gonna hit this with some Ushi van der Osten powder to give it a metallic sheen and then I'll come back here I'll do the weathering on the inside of my exhaust and there it is. I don't have a whole lot of light, but it's uh, dark in there. So I'll do a little bit of weathering. I'll probably spray a little bit of uh, buff is what I usually use just to give it, just to highlight some areas. And then I'll do a metallic finish on the exhaust nozzle. And we should be good to go to close it up. One thing I forgot to... Uh, touch on before I close this up, I'm going to want to 
cut off this ventral fin from the kit part. Uh, let's see if I can find, oh, here it is. Uh, here is the resin replacement, and I it was kind of warped. The other one was warped as well. I just kind of, I slowly heated it up with my heat gun and bent it back into shape. But you can see the difference right there. So, obviously you want to do this before you close it up because then if you uh, try to glue this on first, you're going to have this little part to deal with. So you want to you want to get it cut off before. Also, what I'm going to have to do is there's going to be a gap where this ventral fin was that I'm going to need to insert a piece of uh, styrene plastic card right in here so and fill that that uh, gap in so then I can have a place to put this because if I don't you're just gonna have a wide opening because this is obviously a lot thinner so I'm gonna get to cutting this thing off I'm probably just gonna score it with my exacto blade and then I'll take my my cutters and just kind of hog it out and then sand it flush that's how I did the other one also I got the uh, my tube in there I'm letting that dry and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll shave it down with an exacto knife I left it just a little bit proud and then I'll come in and, and fill in the little gap that's around it so it'll it'll look uh, it'll look flush and like it's right into the end of the uh, the metal of the fuselage Okay, one other thing that I have to do before I close up the front, the, um, the fuselage has, is I have to put in the front wheel bay. And Trumpeter, also in their awesome engineering, has you put in the front landing gear as well. Well, the kit part has posts, so you basically have to put the, the front landing gear on, put the rubber tire on the wheel, hook it all up and put it in, which that's not gonna work. Um, you're gonna get paint all over everything. It's, it's just, it's really poor engineering. So what I've done, the owner supplied these scale aircraft conversions, white metal landing gear. I don't like white metal landing gear, but um, I am gonna have to put 110 grams of nose weight in this thing. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and use them on the G model. Now on the D model, uh, I ended up using the plastic part, but I put a pin, a rod, all the way through here to stiffen it up. And I also drilled out, like I have drilled out here, I just drilled out a, a hole, and then I'm gonna accept, it's going to accept this rod that came with a kit that you use on the, uh, the flaps and stuff, which is gimmicky and stupid, so we're not using it, I'm just gluing the flaps in. But uh, so I'm using one of these and that way I can install the landing gear and not have to install the wheel when I close it up. I can just uh, put it on here like so and glue this in once I get finished with the model. And there we go. I uh, will have to shave this down a little bit, but uh, I think that'll work and this is gonna be able to hold all that weight now I could have just went ahead and used the plastic part to pin it in and and ran a pin through it uh, that was really kind of a pain in the butt it does work and um, the the kit landing gear actually does look a lot better than this stuff but um, I thought I'd go ahead and try these metal landing gear that the guy sent me I am using the metal landing gear on the back of the other one and on this one as well they're not too bad and they clean up pretty well. But uh, we'll see how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all glued up. I probably could maybe figure out a way to close up this landing gear bay and then put the landing gear in at the end. 
but I don't think it's going to be as strong as if I go ahead and do it now. And I want to, I want this front landing gear to be, be uh, in here really well because of all that weight. So I'm going to get on with this and uh, catch you in a minute. All right, I'm getting ready to close up the fuselage. And as you can see here, I've got this tail section glued on each one. I've also got each one of my compartments glued into one side of the plane. Now, <clears throat> if you have trouble, and a lot of times, you know, they'll have you, if I can remember, I think the B-17 and the B-25 uh, was kind of like this. He had all these compartments to, to glue and to align and slots. And what I found is the easiest to do is I took each one of these and I started with the engine and I glued the engine into the slot that it was supposed to be in and came back and I didn't glue this side and I put the other fuselage half on and taped it shut, got it all aligned so that way the, uh, the holes line up and this is uh, so once the glue sets I don't have to do any more adjusting on the engine. And then the next thing I did was the Bombay, did it the same way, and then uh, on and on with the, with the cockpit and the wheel, wheel bay. So each one of these is all glued in and set where it needs to be. That way I'm not trying to glue both sides on each one of those and having them fall out and make a mess and trying to get everything aligned at the same time. So next what I'll do is I'll just uh, fill in some slow curing glue in each one of these. I'll put it together, tape it up, and then once that dries, then I can uh, start going down my seams and gluing the seams together. Okay, I've got my seam lines taken care of. Everything's together, everything is where it should be. I have re-riveted. I uh, was able to go through <clears throat> and <clears throat> I did a pretty good job at destroying as little amount of detail as possible and uh, but what detail I did destroy I did I did put back but now what I want to do before I get wings on it well, I got to start working on the wings but before I get wings on it I want to put on the ventral fin so what I've done is I've inserted these pins and that way it's going to give it a little extra strength than just gluing it on there if you just glue it on there what's going to happen is I'm going to knock it and it's just gonna pop off, no matter what kind of glue I use. Okay, next on the to-do list is to cut the, and you guys are gonna, somebody on here is gonna yell at me, but I'm gonna call it a dashboard. So I need to cut it down, since the instrument panel's lower, I need to cut it down just a little bit, because it is, does sit a little too high. And that's not that big of an issue. What I found with the other one, when I went to put it together, Trumpeter's got this mess right here. It's just a, a plain area. And I haven't been able to find any real good pictures <clears throat> excuse me, of this part on, uh, on the internet. But I have found a couple resin pieces that fit in here. And it looks like there's almost like a canvas type covering over this area. There's, a, there's some instruments right here and some wiring. And so what I'm going to do is create that canvas covering with toilet paper and uh, Mod Podge, basically white glue. And uh, I'll show you how I do that on the next exciting episode. I did it in the other one and I was really happy with the results. It's pretty easy to do. Rather than making one out of Millipod or uh, Magic Sculpt, it just seems a little bit easier and uh, I think it, uh, the results are, are pretty good. Okay, now I've got it cut down. I probably still need, need to do a little bit tr uh, more trimming up here, but I'll know once I get that, that piece in there how much I need to trim out. Now, Trumpeter decided to, I guess this is supposed, supposed to replicate um, fabric <laughs> as an epic fail on their part. Mm, just looks stupid. But anyway, I'm going to cover all this in my toilet paper canvas in the next episode. So I appreciate you guys watching. For those of you that are building this kit, I hope this is uh, 
kind of helped you and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. All right, I'm going to make the canvas cover using toilet paper. Now, I'm not sure if you can use paper towel. I kind of doubt it. Toilet paper kind of seems to absorb water a little bit better. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to mix some Mod Podge and a little bit of water just to dilute it. And uh, you just want it kind of runny. Enough that it'll soak in to the toilet paper rather than just stick on top of it. Yikes, that might have been a little too much. Just mix it up. And as you can see, I've already cut out a piece of toilet paper on here. Set this aside. So I'm basically just taking the toilet paper and I'm cutting it to shape just a little bit bigger than what I want. So now that I've got this shape cut out, I can cut out the other side. And you want a little bit bigger because you're going to want to kind of fold it and manipulate it. And I would guess, and I didn't have to do this on the last one, but I would guess once this dries, you could probably still cut it and peel it away, but you don't want it to uh, get in the way of the canopy area, because obviously you're not gonna be able to glue the canopy on over, over this stuff. So I'll just kind of put it on like this. Then I will take my mixture, yikes. And I will wet it. My brush isn't absorbing it. Put a little bit more water in here. Last time I did this, it really sucked it up. You get really wet with this stuff and it'll dry hard. What's good about this toilet paper is it will, uh, you can mold it pretty easily once you get it where you want it. And once it gets wet, it'll pretty much go where you put it and it still maintains that that kind of flowy canvas feel to it. Again, I want to keep it inside of the area where I'm going to be gluing my canopy because I don't want to have it interfere with that. And I think that is going to be Good, right there, guys. Okay, now what I'll do, push this down a little bit over here. Push it in under my little radar thing. Okay, now that is all there is to it. And all the only thing I have to do is let it dry. 
Then I'll, once it dries, I'll come back with some Mr. Surfacer uh, 1000 and hand paint that to get a nice seal on it. And then I can uh, go ahead and paint it and add my wiring and any other details. I think there's another little thing right here that I need to add and then I need to add the top part. Once I get that painted, I can throw my canopy on and uh, and uh, have the this part of the plane ready to paint. Obviously, I'm not gonna paint it until I get the wings on, but uh, I can be done with, with the fuselage. So that's all there is to it, fellas.